Hey, you want to see something cool? Hi guys, welcome back or welcome to DreamWorks Switch to Life. And in today's video, we are finally on the final installment of my DCM playlist. Took a long time to get here, over six videos. I left a link to the playlist down below in the description in case you haven't seen the first five parts. But with that in mind, I hope that you guys are braced for impact because this video will detail every single TV show that is not based off of a movie that DreamWorks has made. So let's discuss it. Oh, and one last thing, there will be spoilers ahead for every single TV show in this video. So if you're not familiar with the DCM, also known as the DreamWorks Cinematic Multiverse, or if you just decided not to watch my previous five videos, it's essentially a theory of mine that states that every single movie and TV show DreamWorks has ever made takes place in a multiverse. But some universes have more crossover potential than others, but every single TV show and movie exists somewhere in this multiverse. I've also decided to name the universes after the letters of the alphabet instead of numbers like Marvel does. I feel like that's enough of a refresher, so without further ado, let's dive on in. So the first thing on our list is Archibald's next big thing is here. Now, we're going to go through this list from the order of Earths alphabetically. So we're going to go to Earth C for this one, also known as Earth Crackridge, which is the city that the main show of Archibald's next big thing takes place. And for your information, Archibald's next big thing could actually take place in any universe. It's just that I decided to place it in its own separate universe because I can't really find a show that has the same style of animation compared to this one. But the main reason that Archibald's next big thing can take place in any universe is the fact that it doesn't actually take place on Earth. It's revealed in Archibald's next big thing is here that uh, it turns out that the entire population of Crackridge is actually on a completely different planet, which is not Earth. In fact, at one point, we even see a human come to the planet, and he has to find some way to get off. So, while Archibald's next big thing can fit into any universe, simply due to the fact that Archibald and his family are aliens, I decided to place both shows on Earth C. And now we move on to a completely different universe known as Earth E, also known as Earth Eternia. And I think there are actually two shows that we can place in this timeline Voltron Legendary Defender and She Ra Princesses of Power. Now, some minor spoilers ahead, but essentially, aliens invade planet Earth in Voltron Legendary Defender, and eventually, humans decide to flee planet Earth and go to a completely different world. They discover a new world called Eternia, and they actually create a lot of technological advancements while they're there, and later, they invade the neighboring planet, Etheria, which the citizens of Etheria later named the human invaders the first ones, and they create something called the Heart of Eternia, and they also create the Sword of She-Ra. Just so you know, She-Ra is a magical being from the planet of Etheria, but the people of Eternia, the first ones, made the sword to corrupt She-Ra and use her for their own purposes, and that is just really complicated. So essentially what you want to know is Voltron Legendary Defender is set in the modern day in the 2010s and 2020s, while She-Ra and the Princesses of Power is set in the far off future, probably 2,000 years in the future. Now, that's what happens in the main timeline of Earth-E, but what happens if something completely different happened? What if, for some weird reason, Cleopatra was sent into the future from 54 BC? 30,000 years into the future. That's really long time. And without Cleopatra there, some events in history take place differently. For instance, the space pirates discover planet Earth, and with it, they manage to find, sell, and destroy the Blue Lion of Voltron. This leads to a all-out war on planet Earth, which unfortunately results in an apocalypse starting in the year 2020, where 
uh, due to some chemicals, animals on Earth become anthropomorphic versions of themselves, gain intelligence, and force humans to go underground for over 200 years. Yeah, it's really complicated. Eventually, they decide to make peace, and they look to the stars for space travel, especially when an invader known as Octavian threatens to destroy planet Earth and all of its history in a thing called the Blight. So now we actually have a timeline to work with. At some point in the past, Cleopatra is transported into the future, events unfold differently, and there's an apocalypse in the year 2020. 200 years after that, we have Kipo, the Age of Wonder Beasts. A while after that, there is an invasion from the Emperor Octavian, who decides that he wants to conquer planet Earth and destroy all of its resources in the Blight. 30,000 years into the future, we finally have Cleopatra popping back into an existence to become the savior of the Nile galaxy. Okay, so that's one confusing Earth. Let's move to a different one, and that is Rhyme Time Town, which actually takes place on Earth F. And yes, I know what you're saying. I already placed the Shrek movies on Earth F. What is Rhyme Time Town doing there? Well, actually... Rhyme Time Town takes place in an alternate universe, and while I wish that I could place Rhyme Time Town in its own separate universe, I can't, because there is one character in particular that prevents me from doing this, Humpty Dumpty. Essentially, Humpty Dumpty is an orphan in the Puss in Boots movies and the entire Shrek franchise, but in Rhyme Time Town, we actually see him growing up with his Mumpty. So, while the two franchises take place on the same universe, they actually exist in different timelines. And now we move to a completely different universe altogether known as Earth H, also known as Earth Harvey. Essentially, this is where Harvey Street Kids, or the more common title, Harvey Girls Forever, takes place. And the main reason it takes place in its own separate universe? I mean, look around! They literally point this out in the show. There's a pink sky, there's a no parents, although that was debunked in the series finale. Okay, so basically the main reason that this goes in its own separate universe is due to the pink sky on everywhere. And now we move from one confusing universe to another one, and that being Earth J, also known as Earth Jurassic. If you must know, the main things that take place on this universe are completely owned by Universal. This includes Fast and Furious Spy Racers, which, yes, DreamWorks did make. And no, it may not actually be canon to the movies. It might be. It's still up for debate, and to be honest, most people think it isn't. I haven't actually seen the movies, so I can't really have an opinion on this matter, but I really enjoyed watching the show. But what's really important to distinguish is that even though the main timeline of Earth Jurassic is the Jurassic World franchise, there is an alternate universe where Fast and Furious takes place, and maybe an alternate universe from that where Spy Racers takes place. Speaking of the main Jurassic timeline, our next show actually takes place in that timeline, this being Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. And for your information, the show has literally been confirmed to be 100% canon with the movies. So for those of you who are like, they can't exist in the same universe, they do. So the show takes place with the first season in the December of 2015, and then uh, various seasons leading up to the summer of 2016, and finally an epilogue in the June of 2018, just after the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now, here's where things get tricky. You might need to suspend your belief for this next part. So, you know how in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic World Dominion, dinosaurs have completely overtaken the world and shaken up the way that we humans have to live? Well, what if they shake it up so much that for some weird, inexplicable reason, we humans decided to make our construction equipment look like dinosaurs? I think most of you can see where I'm going with this. Behold, dino trucks. Okay, yeah, I know what some of you are saying, just hear me out. 
We humans need to find some way to cope with dinosaurs, and what better way than to blend in looking like them with our mechanics? And somehow, some way, there's so much advancements in technology that we just implement our brains into the mechanical machines that we create. But unfortunately, those machines go out of control and they eventually cause the extinction of all humans, dinosaurs, and honestly, the only things that remain are dino trucks and rep tools and other mechanical things that we somehow created during our testing. Now, I don't think that it's going to be in the near future, but I do believe that dino trucks will take place at least 1,000 years after the events of the main Jurassic World movies. So yeah, there's that timeline laid out for you. And once again, we find ourselves in a completely different universe known as Earth M, also known as Earth Mighty. And well, the main reason I put this one in its own separate universe there's so many inconsistencies, not only with the characters, with the show, but it's like, what is happening with this show? I just, I don't know what to think of it anymore. It's impossible to put this in a single universe with another show, so instead I just decided to put it in its own separate universe by itself. Now, let's move to another universe, Earth T, also known as Earth Toyland. In this universe, we have the Naughty franchise. The mechanics in this universe are so different from any other universe that I just decided to put it in its own separate universe and call it a day. Now, this is a really weird show because even though DreamWorks technically did make this show, they aren't actually the makers of it. What I mean is they are the copyright holders to the franchise and the characters, but the actual show was made by Big Idea instead of uh, DreamWorks Animation themselves. I, of course, am referring to VeggieTales in the House and its sequel show, VeggieTales in the City. While the other TV shows that uh, VeggieTales has are still up for debate, I personally believe that these shows take place in their own separate universe called Earth V, known as Earth VeggieTales, where all of the VeggieTales shows take place, be it in a single timeline or in their own separate realities or timelines. And now we've reached the final TV show that we're going to assign a universe to. This is Where's Waldo. And what's really bad about Where's Waldo that prevents it from sticking into other universes is simply due to the Wander Society, the Magic Keys. What's really cool about Where's Waldo is there's world traveling adventures and every episode they visit a new land, new country, new culture, but it all deals with the magic keys and wanderers, wizards. There's just so much wackiness and weirdness going on that if you wanted to combine it with another DreamWorks property, you couldn't. Hence why I decided to put it in its own separate universe called Earth W, also known as Earth Wander. Now, over the course of this series, I have assigned every single movie and most of the TV shows, but not every TV show. And the main reason I didn't was because some of the TV shows that DreamWorks has made are still being made to this day. They're still waiting for future seasons. This includes Gabby's Dollhouse, Go Dog Go, Team Zenko Go, Not Quite Narwhal, Do Drop Diaries, and because I haven't seen the shows on Apple TV+, Plus, Doug Unplugs, and Pinecone and Pony, neither of which I have seen. There's also the shows that DreamWorks eventually plans to make, but there is also one final category. The shows that DreamWorks once upon a time did make when they were under DreamWorks Pictures, but now they no longer own the rights to those shows. Most of these shows are made exclusively for adults. This includes Toonsylvania, Invasion America, Alienators Evolution Continues, Father of the Pride, and Neighbors from H.E. Double Hockey Stick. The main reason I don't count those shows for one thing, they are made exclusively for adults. They are owned by DreamWorks Pictures, not DreamWorks Animation. And finally, you can't find most of them anymore. There's not a single copy of Toonsylvania out there in the world. And while you can find the leaked versions of Alienators Evolution Continues, Invasion America, Father of the Pride, and you can also buy um, the 
fifth TV show, which even though DreamWorks Animation did make it, they didn't actually want to be associated with it, so they made it under a new brand called Moon Boy Animation, and it was so bad that Moon Boy Animation was done after just one show. So with that in mind, that is every single TV show, with some exceptions, listed into a universe of the DCM, also known as the DreamWorks Cinematic Universe. And with it, the final installment of my DCM series has been posted. I hope that you guys enjoyed this ser six-part series, and if you want, I might do a updated version that lists every single movie and TV show in a single universe in a timeline order instead of just randomly spouting off where they take place. If you want to see some of that, leave your comments down below. But until next time, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on all things DreamWorks. But until next time, bye bye!